Corden and while other folks are joining us, uh, let me uh, make a quick intro. So today we are going to chat about leveraging intent data for hyper-targeted marketing and sales campaigns. As I mentioned in the webinar announcement, uh, we have um, several uh, actually guests today and I have partnered with uh, intent data vendors with guys from Happier Leads. Today you'll meet founder of Happier Leads, George Georgiadis and uh, founder of Rocks and Gold, uh, Victor Krasovsky. So we'll share several use cases on how you can practically use uh, intent data and at the same time I will share with you our use case how to extract the intent data, how to filter it, and how to leverage it in your marketing and sales processes. Before we'll start, let me ask you a question. Do you use any source of intent data? If yes, please type in the chat what sources of intent data you are using right now. And it would be great if you'll type your job role, marketer, SDR, account executive, etc. So let's make a quick uh, overview. Um, just type if 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 you are not using anything, just say I am not using intent data. That's absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, happier leads. So we have happier leads customers. That's cool. Uh, lead onion, Google Suite, LinkedIn input, cool. Zoom info, hot wax commerce, Bombora, Zoom info intent, but not using cool. So. Uh, that's really interesting, uh, and let's let's make a quick uh, let's make a quick uh, also check where you are guys coming from. So just type uh, where you're sitting right now: India, United States, France, Iran, Greece, Netherlands, Ireland. Canada, Indonesia, Philippines. Cool, so we have people across the world. Belgium, Colorado, Spain. Cool, cool. So yeah, so we have international audience today. Uh, and I hope that webinar will be valuable for you. You know that every time we are focusing on practical stuff and uh, avoid just theoretical uh, high level advice. So let's dive in. Uh, first of all, let me introduce you the agenda. I want to start with the cost effective sources of the intent data to identify companies with the existing demand. I see quite often uh, there is a huge stereotype about intent data that it's like it's really expensive, it uh, costs a lot, and that's why companies are not using it. At the same time, I see another huge challenge. Lots of companies have no idea how to process the intent data, how to get maximum of it, because you know, if you don't have processes, then you just have some data, some numbers some information that makes no sense to you. And I want to share with you our case study, Full Funnel, how we capture, filter, store, and transfer the intent data at fullfunnel.io. And then I will give the mic to guys. Uh, Victor will share with you some practical use cases, how to use the intent data from the job boards. And uh, George will share with you how to use the website visits data in the sales campaigns. So let's dive in. Uh, for those who don't know me, I am co-founder at fullfunnel.io. This is full, full funnel account-based marketing consultant company. As well, I'm running howiplan.io. It's a marketing planning platform for B2B companies. I'm running B2B marketers and founders communities and spent 15 years in B2B marketing and sales. Uh, another guest, Viktor Krasovsky, is co-founder and CEO at Rocks and Gold. And this is, as we mentioned, this is a uh, Intent data vendor, a vendor that provides your data from job hirings and actually Victor introduced himself as well a little bit later. And George, who is founder at Happier Leads. This is a software that helps you identify your B2B website visitors. He spent as well 12 years in uh, different uh, start running different startups and as well running B2B companies uh, among their customers. You see lots of well-known names. Again, George will introduce himself a little bit later. Uh, but I know that you 
came not listening about us. You came to get the practical information. So let's dive in. Let's start with the cost effective sources of the intent data. The first one is LinkedIn intent data. And basically this is a huge source of information. You know, LinkedIn, if you are doing demand generation on LinkedIn, you'll have a bunch of insights. You can see who, uh, who is visiting your LinkedIn profiles who is engaging with your LinkedIn content, uh, what companies are consuming your LinkedIn content. Um, you can see who is following you. If you have LinkedIn sales navigator, you can build account lists and stay updated. And that's basically, that's one of the key sources. Basically, this is what we used to say at fullfunnel.io. Try to flip outbound to inbound. Lots of companies start with, you know, automated sequences, just uh, sending, you know, connection requests and pitching potential clients and uh, basically wasting time because this outreach is not personalized. Usually it makes no sense to customers, to potential customers, of course, uh, because first of all, your competitors are doing the same. Secondly, if somebody is wearing title CEO, CTO, or whatever, CMO, head of growth, it doesn't mean that this person is in a buying mode, that this person might be interested in your solution. And But when you start doing demand generation, you can copy, first of all, you can uh, attract the attention and you can capture this demand. And basically you can always start conversations. You can engage with your potential customers. And, you know, we have, uh, we have arranged three webinars on this topic. So if you'd be interested, I can send you the recordings uh, where you can check the practical aspects of capturing the LinkedIn intent data, but you got the idea. That's first of all, that's a huge source of intent data information. Next website visitors, uh, you can install happier leads, for example. And this software starts from, let's say, 60 bucks per month. It's, uh, you know, if you are selling uh, anything above 60 <laughs> euros per month, that then ROI will be huge. Because first of all, you can track the account engagement. You can see the recent, uh, recency of visits. You can see what exact pages your target accounts visited, you know, how much time they spent on these pages. And this is how you can, if you have uh, later, I will uh, present to you the engagement criteria, but basically if you know that company spends 30 minutes on your pricing page or on your service page, doesn't it make sense to reach out to the buying committee from these companies? Even if you don't know who exactly checked your page, you can reach out to the buying committee and uh, ask that somebody from their team, you know, was interested in the services. And if this person uh, can refer you to the right person, and maybe this person knows who was interested in your services. So that's the lowest hanging fruit. Uh, so you can leverage software like uh, Happier Leads, for example. Next, some uh, some of you guys mentioned that uh, you have used Bombora. I know that Bombora has enterprise solution, which is around 30K per year, which might be, of course, uh, costly to startups, to SMBs. But at the same time, Bombora has premium feature. And for many companies, it will be enough. You know, what you can do is just define, uh, let's say, target keywords. And in this case, you can see our example. So keywords like B2B marketing, account-based marketing, account-based sales development, et cetera. And then Bombora will send you weekly reports. Uh, I forgot to say, you need to define your target markets. And then Bombora will be sending you reports, you know, uh, saying that these accounts are interested in this topic. They're capturing the data from Google. They see what companies, you know, are searching for these keywords. And so, voila, the same like with intent data from, uh, let's say, from happier leads, you can now connect with these companies. Of course, I'm not saying pitching. So I mean the connection. So you can engage with the buying committee. You can qualify these people. You can add them to your warm-up campaigns, et cetera. So basically, now you are capturing the, de the demand. You see the companies that might have potential need. Next, you can leverage social signals and it's really powerful. You can install software like Mention and you can set up the target keywords like you can see on the left screenshot. You can set up you know, the keyword like account-based marketing services and uh, Mention will be sending you reports you know, from social media, from blog posts, uh, 
what companies or what people are interested in specifically in our services. Or uh, you can set up topics, you can set up brand mentions, you can track, you know, when somebody is mentioning your competitors. And again, this is how you can, uh, again, capture this demand. And of course, you need to follow, mm, you need to follow uh, the buying committee of your target accounts, not only the chief executive officers, but uh, let's say internal champions, influencers, potential blockers. And if quite often people are making updates on social media and that would be a huge source of insights for you if they say, okay, so who can, you know, recommend, I don't know, account-based marketing agency or who can recommend any source of internet data. That's a fantastic source to connect with these people, you know, and present your solution. So next one is hiring. And basically this is what Trucks and Gold does. They provide you, so you can, uh, this is a practical example of, uh, you know, searching for uh, companies, looking for companies that uh, are going to hire account-based marketing manager. And in the, in the case, if you are selling account-based marketing services or account-based marketing software, that's a huge opportunity to connect with these people. You know, you see the job description, you see the roles, you can learn more, you can do the account research, you can identify potential needs of this company and present your services or your solution or send again, depending on your sales process or ask for the challenges they have, why they are hiring this person, you know, maybe, uh, send some useful resources. Again, don't want to focus on the practical solutions on how to engage the account, but basically this is an insight. Now you know who exactly you are going to target, who exactly you are going to prospect. And these are actually, these are the low cost, you know, uh, these are the low cost uh, sources of internet data that will cost you less than uh, $100 per month. So no excuses for not using the intent data. And now I want to present, I know I, I have said uh, in the beginning that uh, lots of companies are struggling with processing the intent data, with leveraging it. So I'm going to share with you a practical use case, how we capture, filter, store, and transfer the intent data at fullfunnel.io. So our step-by-step -step process. First of all, you need to be clear on what sources of intent data you want to capture. So in our case, we have created a, an SOP, standard operational procedure, uh, where we actually describe what kind of uh, resources our, let's say, marketing manager should track, how often, etc. That's the first step. The second one is providing clear guidelines, clear instructions on how to leverage this data. I found, uh, again, with my co-founder Vladimir, I found that the most easiest way to explain it is actually record the video, you know, and explain how to fill in the spreadsheet, not just given, you know, theoretical advice or guideline, but actually recording the video, how you are filling the report or CRM by yourself. And in our case, let's say you can see a practical example. We say that you need to filter the data. You need to disqualify some accounts. And this is one of the most common mistakes. Lots of companies have no disqualification criteria and so they're prospecting everybody. You know, the truth is that not all leads are created equal and not all leads are good fit for your company. So not everybody should appear in your sales pipeline. So it's not the MQL game, not you know sourcing your list with prospects, but basically sourcing your CRM, uh, sourcing your sales team with high quality accounts that might have potential need. So of course, before processing intent data, you have, you need to have, you must have ideal customer profile and uh, account qualification and disqualification criteria. So on the right screenshot, you can see how it looks like. And uh, then just simply record the video explaining, you know, uh, actually, for example, if you are using happier leads, you can just uh, record the video, how you are qualifying specific company, how you apply the tier tag or why you are disqualifying specific company. And this is how you can make it clear to your, let's say marketing manager or to your assistant, depending on your company structure, maybe to SDR, depending on, uh, uh, again, on your team structure. Next, you need to create a sort of spreadsheet. I feel that it always makes sense before transfer 
transferring you know the data to uh, to the CRM it always um, make uh, make sense to create some sort of uh, let's say preliminary uh, preliminary spreadsheet, if you will, where you can, you know, store this data. And in our case, you can see the, the example of this report. So you have company names, you have the location, you have the qualification. So the applied tier, then you have a link, for example, to, so recently we used Albacross, but so we switched to Happier Leads. Uh, and there are many reasons for those who are interested why you can ask in the chat and when I will stop uh, my presentation, I will answer that question. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> basically right now we are using Happier Leads. Next, we, we ask to uh, actually to add the website, the link to uh, LinkedIn URL and the links to the buying committee. So we ask to proceed you know, with the buying committee to identify the buying committee structure and then we have the engagement criteria something that i will present just in a moment so before adding this uh, right now you have a list of target accounts or prospects but before transferring this data to sales team it absolutely makes sense to agree with sales what should be the leads hands off criteria basically what this account what this prospect must accomplish, must do, you know, before this contact will be transferred to the sales team, before this account will be transferred to the sales team. So example of engagement criteria, visited work with us page twice or spent more than five minutes, a LinkedIn engagement, at least five posts, downloaded gated content, at least one, visited product page, two visits in the last 14 days. Total time on the website, more than 30 minutes. So this is not, uh, these are not the criteria that exclude, you know, each other, but basically this is a set of criteria that must be, uh, let's say, must be done before this lead or this account will be transferred to the CRM and then assigned to a sales rep. So this is the first recommendation. One of the most common mistakes I am seeing is when companies, you know, get the data without analyzing this data, without applying leads hands off criteria and sending this data to sales. And then what sales do next? They just send outbound messages, they try to pitch. But basically, if a customer, you know, let's be honest, if a potential customer downloaded gated content or visited just your page once, it doesn't mean that they are buying right now. If they wanted to have a demo call or discover a call with your team, they booked it from your website. They didn't do it, which means that they're missing some information. So you need to have this engagement criteria and for your sales team, it's just an information that you need to connect, you need to find, you need, you need to qualify more, you need to find, uh, or let's say figure out uh, what's actually your potential customer needs. Why didn't they book a call, you know? Do they need any additional information? Are they making research? So your goal is to identify at what buying stage there at the moment. And this is one of the most, let's say, common mistakes I'm seeing, transferring, you know, the leads to the uh, sales leads. I, we can we can't call this company's leads. These are just contacts or prospects. And then just trying to, you know, pitch them your product or service, one of the most common mistakes. And finally, you need to make SOPs. Basically, you need to make, a, to create a daily process or weekly process. So you need to identify the frequency, how often you want to get these reports, you know. And uh, in our case, as you can see, we describe the daily process. We describe when it makes sense to analyze this data. And uh, actually, you see, well, we'll also create notifications from DocSend, go out to Vika. So this, our marketing manager will receive the email notifications, etc., And then we create a video explaining how to use this data. So this is one of the most efficient ways. And finally, the report frequency. Do, how, how often do you want to receive these reports? Do, of, do you want you know, to get these reports before a weekly pipeline review meeting? Do you want to receive them daily? Do you want uh, you know, to update your CRM on a weekly basis, on a bi-weekly? Up to you, but when you set it up, when you have a practical, you know, practical guideline, practical instructions, instructions, sorry, then 
you'll have a process. Otherwise, what I'm seeing how most companies are working with Intel data, they say, okay, let's use Bombora, let's use Zoom Info, let's install Happier Leads, let's you know use any other software, and they have no process. So they sporadically log into this software when they need something. Then they see a bunch of, let's say, a bunch of information. They don't know how to proceed this information. And this is a waste of time. Unfortunately, software is not a silver bullet. You know, this is a helpful add-on to your marketing and sales process. This is something that simplifies your prospect. And this is something that helps you to identify the accounts with potential need. But if you don't, have a structured way to process this intent data, to filter it and to transfer it to sales team, then you'll be always wasting time. So I hope this use case was helpful to, uh, for you. Let me know if you have any questions. I will just feel free to ask these questions in the chat. I will answer all of these questions. And meanwhile, I want to uh, give mic to Victor who will share uh, rocks and gold case studies, how uh, actually you can use an intent data from, uh, let's say, uh, leveraging information that some companies are hiring at the moment. So Victor, you are welcome. Thanks, Andre. Hey guys, can you hear me? Is it our gold? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I so we can hear you. Nice. So I'm gonna share the screen. Let me know if you see this. Can you see this? Oh. Not yet. Just a moment. Okay. Now should be good. Can you see me? Can you see the screen? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. okay, guys. Um, I hope you're enjoying your Tuesday. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about hiring data and hiring behavior as a segment of intent data. And that's. I hope that's gonna be extremely useful. Maybe you try to use something like this. Maybe you didn't. But for us, it was extremely useful. I started my career is you know in sales and outbound sales and years ago, like five years ago when I got this idea that, okay, I might check what the company is hiring before uh, reaching out to them was actually life-changing, right? It led, it led me to boost my sales. It led me to the creation of the first MVP where we would use that as a process because Andre said exactly at the end of the presentation that the process is the most powerful thing. You want benefit of it using it just once or twice, but when you have a process built around that and how we call it data-driven process, uh, that's actually what you'll see big result coming uh, into your pipeline. And before I'll tell you about the solution, which is Rock's Goal platform, I want to tell you about the problems and the challenges that we were solving with this. And I take it like really personally, I see, I see it all the time with the, you know, companies uh, struggling with some of the things. So I named top three problems that led us to the creation of the solution. Uh, you know, with the hiring data. And the first one is that, you know, we've seen that many B2B companies don't have any process where they would get updates or receive some kind of alerts automatically, you know, in a passive mode about something that happens in the CRM, something that happens with the, you know, clients in the network. Thus, they can't uh, guess what's the best timing to re-engage them. And the reason why it's number one, because guys, like, believe me, the fastest deal you can make often is with a company that you already know. You don't have to find people, you know, you don't have to find their contact details, emails, anything like, like that. We all have CRMs. Uh, oftentimes, you know, we have thousands and thousands of profiles and contacts, and there is no strategy to, you know, re-engage them. And believe me, just sometimes that there is this opportunity window where all you have to do is just, you know, pick up your phone give it a call and ask what's the problem you know what's the problem they try to solve and offer your solution that will be the fastest deal you can make because you skip this process you know finding contacts finding people you just get to the solution and so that's very important to look what's happening in your CRM, what's happening with your network number two is that commonly you know prob you probably you agree with me to some degree that b2b sales these dev teams oftentimes they don't use sales intent data so they can see what's the opportunity window they can see what are the current needs and if it if the company that you're approaching actually has some needs and the you know services or products that you're offering that you have to offer to them and i, I want to be clear that you know contacts data companies data 
it's not sales data, right? It's not sales. Sales data is something that would signal you that the company is making a, an important decision. You know, they have some choice, important choice uh, they have to make in their business. Or let's say there are some internal changes that's going on. And, you know, opportunity window is a really best term for that. You know, companies think about your product, think about your services, think about the timing that are the best uh, to, you know, consider, consider your solution. And you have to target exactly that time. And number three is that, well, we experienced that all, I guess, maybe as a sales, maybe as the potential leads for somebody, but, you know, BDR says there are some times, let's be honest, sometimes they guess or make up reasons to contact potential clients, right? Like, we, I, I, I've seen it a lot, you know, I've seen, I, I see it on LinkedIn time to time. And, you know, when you have real-time data, it gives you context. Again, it gives you the situation the company is uh, facing right now, and you can engage them in a conversation about this situation, which would, again, be a real reason. It will prove to people that you did your research, that you know who they are and what they're doing. So real-time data must guide sales. That's that's for sure. That's 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 really one of the key things that I learned uh, before we started building Rockscope platform as a solution. And what Rockscope platform does essentially is that it helps you to find B two B companies in buying mode via hiring. And I'm gonna explore a little bit more what kind of a you know. Um, Hiring behavior could signal, obviously depends on the business, but you can think of it as a um, uh, highly searchable, um, let's say a, a, a place where you have data coming from you know, 20 plus job boards where you could just build the filters, apply different filters and see exactly what you need, right? So we solve some problems such as, you know, you can take off the list, recruiting companies, uh, no fake companies, fake profiles get on the platform. So you can say with the two clicks, you can say, show me, com show me only fintech companies looking for UI UX, for example, right? Or show me companies that look uh, specifically for consultants, right? So you just type it and you see the list of companies searching for specific expertise. And number two is the platform allows you to monitor your network for potential opportunities. So you see that we have integration with Salesforce, HubSpot, Pipedrive. We're on a HubSpot marketplace. If you don't have a CRM, uh, like you know, the Salesforce, HubSpot, or Pipedrive, still you can export, import things. But what you have to know is that uh, it's an account intelligence platform. It tells you what the company is looking for, what kind of expertise, what kind of people. And obviously it tells you when the company from your list is searching for something specific. We even say that, you know, stay tuned for news about tech needs or needs about uh, of your clients because that's the low hanging fruit, uh, quote in Andrew, Andre. So going for that, who may use hiring data? We, right now I've seen like we have, you know, 80 people there. So obviously there are different businesses, different services, different products. So I'm gonna name some of the most popular cases we have on the platform and you have to kind of make up your own story from there. And the first typical example is the B2B service companies because what does it mean hiring and paying signal? Uh, when a company is searching for specific expertise, your service may be complementary to what they're looking for. It's like the company X is looking for engineers and you have quality assurance to offer to them, right? Or typical, they're looking for engineers and you come to offer, you know, offshoring, nearshoring. I'm giving you an example of software houses, the most obvious one, but obviously there are different services and you can be complementary to something they're looking for, or you can just outsource, you know, outstock what they're searching for. Number two is a consultancy. So uh, think about it as a consultant, right? We typically, uh, divided into solution-based offers and expertise-based offers. But in essence, uh, think about the company looking for specific expertise, right? People hire, uh, companies hire people to solve some problems, right? They want to get from point A to point B. And as a consultancy company, you can show them the route, like the fastest, most cost-effective route they even couldn't think of, right? So you can, you can see that some companies looking for people that would possess expertise. And that's the perfect moment for consultancy companies to come on board, ask them what exactly they wanna achieve and offer a better solution. The third case is SaaS products, solution as a service. And to me, that's actually personally, that's my favorite example because I see so many great products building right now that are can reinforce potential employees, right? So people hire employees and you can reinforce 
uh, these employees with the tools that you that, that you built uh, that that can help them to do a better job. Or there are some tools that can even substitute roles. Think about their. I've seen a company a case where they would hire lots of lots of accountants, too many accountants, right? And you can reach out to them and say that you know there is a SaaS that can help you to. Uh, process invoices faster. You don't have to solve the problem with people. You can solve problems with the smarter tools. And last, you know, but not least, cases other cases such as recruiting VC. Basically, this uh, there are companies who look at the trends on the market. They need to look at a bigger picture of what's going on in the market, or they need to do, uh, review the historical data on what company do. So that's a great case. And and the, like I would ask, and you, when when you listen to, to the story and you, you imagine your, your business, you imagine your clients. So the right question would be like, what would be the best signal for me, right? And it's not just hiring specifically. We can open brackets and say that, you know, number one, the company might look for something specific expertise, like, you know, DevOps with Kubernetes or Python plus ReactJS, some specific skills, some specific expertise that your company possess. And you can do that just better than a typical employer they would hire. Another case is when some repeating job post is more like of a hiring behavior. When you look at the company, you see that you can't find the right person. And that may be a good moment for you to actually reach out to them and discuss what they need. And often it happens with the companies that have roadmaps, you know, they can't find the right people. They became a little bit worried. And you know, that's a perfect moment for you to reach out to them. Another is some tech transformation initiatives, such as typical example, you know, lots of companies migrating from SAP to SAP S4 HANA. So you look at the company, you see that they're searching for people. That might be the indicator of tech transformation, some uh, digital innovation initiatives, or inside role changes. Uh, you know, companies often hire, you know, product owners, and you can come and say, you know, we can help you with some. You know, how did you can offer, uh, you know, your services, your product when the new people come on board. Uh, last two cases are quite interesting, rapid growth of a team. And I'm going to be sure it here. I think the best example of, uh, you know, many companies target startups and they say, we need startups that got some funding. The problem is not many startups tell the world that they got funding the moment when they get funding. And one thing that you can track and you can spot is that companies, startups, small companies that would got fun get funding, they would start rapidly growing their teams. They would hire people, and that would be a signal for you that you know something's going on with the startup. They got they secured funding. They're growing, so we have to start building relationship with them. Not but not not, not least. Last but not least is the. Um, uh, is the moment when the company is out of your network, obviously hiring. That's my favorite case. As I said, you know, we have plenty of companies have inbounds, you know, plenty of companies have outbounds. There are thousands of companies that were searching. And let's say they told you, well, maybe later we're going to work together. You know, it's not a good time for us. Okay, we're going to stay in touch. So maybe they will forget to reach out to you, but sometimes they would you know, start searching for the expertise that you can provide them with. And that would be the moment for you when you'll see that the company is hurting for something. Okay, going further, I guess you know, that's webinar has to be a little bit more practical, right? And then the idea how to use intent data, how to reach out to companies. So I'll show you some process that is quite typical for us and many of the Rocks Gold users. And before that, I wanna show you what kind of a replies you can get with it. Not that I wanna brag with some of the results, but I wanna show you something, right? So there are some typical replies we get when you reach out to company and you tell them that, you know, I found you because you're looking for that and that person. They will reply to you with some specific details about, you know, what they need, and maybe uh, give you some more details, like giving you some additional details to, to, to complete the picture. And you know, one thing that I really loved about these emails is that um, people often don't recognize that um, they think it's like you made some extra research, right? In fact, when you look at the hiring data, when you have a process built, it's something that you do very typically, right? You can uh, contact 50 companies you know, a day looking for the expertise you provide. But for them, this is something specific. Look how companies react to that and say, I don't usually reply to this. You know, this email is quite different. It caught my eye. Uh, it's, 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 it's actually like kind of surprising that they react, react in a such positive way only because you refer to their situation, only because you refer to the context uh, of the situation the company's in. I really like this one email who is not a template, 
the funny thing that was a template and the story i'm going to tell you now is how i'm using this data and we train people to use this data um, like contextual data in conditional messaging so uh, like uh, that's a good uh, great answer obviously i'm gonna skip this but you know compliments on the best emails but this one is a pretty good one so look at below you know i was referring to specific skills they're searching for to the source and the guy was like he was you know he he is essentially he replied with me with more details about he needs his needs and he would help me to show what his problem so we could have a meaningful conversation so how do i do this and and I don't want to do like any demo of the rocks gold. I just, you know, straightforwardly, guys, after the webinar, you can go on rocks gold, rocks.gold, app rocks gold. There is a free account. You can explore it yourself. There's like no need for me to like, like go in the details, but all you have to know is that, you know, you can connect CRM, you can use different filters and build the list exactly of companies looking for the expertise, specific expertise of people right now. And when you refresh a page, I don't know, in five minutes, you'll see some new jobs coming. So the best thing about real-time data is that if you can convert some of these signals in a conversation today, you will be able to tomorrow, next week, next month. So it's really worth exploring it. You just, you know, you build up your network and you start tracking what they're searching for. I have some gifts here. Um, just to kind of give you an example of what, uh, how, how, how fast it actually takes, you know, I just exclude recruitment. I say, show me jobs that have product design, UI, UX skills. And then I run it through my list. I say, show me companies that are in my Bay Area network. Then, then I say, show me companies that were also on conference that I visited some time ago. Done, you know, then show me the site like easy right you see it I, it takes me just a couple of clicks to filter 30k jobs into like 66 jobs out of my network another example is when i would let's say focus on something specific and i would say show me just some you know job names vp director is something that has an important like highly important uh, intent data for me intent signals show me remote done right and when you do this you get the full public information about the company. So you can do your research before sending it anywhere. You can actually research and qualify leads, check the history, check what's going on, uh, check what the company does and make your decision whether you wanna approach them or not. And the last case is I like find best of the best, best of the best. Why not search for exactly what you need? If you're a consultant, sir, you know, find your um, skills that you wanna track expertise and just write consultants, contractors. That may work, why not? Many companies do that, that works exactly, right? You, you, you're gonna be the first one to approach them. So uh, going to the end uh, and telling you how to send emails and that will be like a short story on that. So you qualify the leads, you know, there are 25 data points. You have to use these data points to make your message highly relevant. And I call it connect dots, right? You can connect dots and how do you do this? So you have plenty of data fields, you know, job names, uh, some company size, what the company does, all of the public information. And like just Andrew said, you know, you can divide it into tiers. And obviously it's oversimplify example, but you know, you can build different sequences, conditional sequences on this data. So the way I like to tell about this is that, you know, many of tools that people use, they have just simple data fields, right? You can take this data and you can say, um, hi, first name, you know, I, I found that you're looking for a job name on the job source, and that's going to be fine. That may work better than just a simple ma email that will say, hi, it's me, we're doing that, it's us, 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 right? You make an email that says only things about the clients, but there are many levels of personalization you can do. And I guess I want you to, like, one of the outcomes I, I, we should have out of this webinar is to explore conditional messaging, explore liquid templates, because that's what can bring you on the next level. You don't have to obviously send automated emails, but you can use tools that would take as much as possible out of data that you have and build up the email for you. So there is like a little store of different levels of personalization. And if you ever used Excel if function, then you will completely nail it. It's super easy, right? If you're a CEO, the next sentence is going to be about, um, how much money we can save. If you're a CTO, the next sentence will be about technology and so on and so on. So guys, look at these tools. These are tools I worked with and there are more tools that use such rules, you know, conditional messages, liquid templates. So guys, 
uh, that's extremely important to uh, make sure that you're using tools that support such features because it makes a huge difference. One thing is to use data as a content, but another thing is to use data as a context, right? And to give you an example, you know, that's uh, how I do it in the Apollo with the liquid templates. And this is my last slide, just to want to show you one of the templates that uh, one of our customers used that was quite successful. And here in the different colors, I show how different data can do, um, let's say can, can become a sentences, conditional sentences in the email, right? So we have yellow as a content where you just use first names or use Salesforce technology that you found on the website, uh, on the website. but you can also find some context uh, such as skills, you know, source to prove that you did a research on them to prove that you know exactly what they're searching for. And obviously the peach, that's my favorite, right? So you choose the sentences, you choose the examples uh, that would be the most relevant to the person you reach out to, right? So I'm reaching out to CEO and I'm asking the most important question uh, about how they do things. You know, you can do the same with the skill tag allocation tag, such as, you know, the company is based in New York. I make sure to tell them that I'm in New York, that we have offices in New York. Uh, if if they are looking for, let's say, they, if they're in FinTech, make sure to attach case study with a FinTech. So you can use like 10 rules and make sure you got to miss a single important point there. So that's how you can take data and the same day you push it to, you know, your uh, tools for outbound campaigns and you just make the email full of context, uh, full of dissertation and that's what works the best for them. So that's my story. I believe that when you send emails like that, the next thing they're gonna do is they're gonna visit your website, guys, I promise. When they like it, they're gonna explore you. They're gonna check the website. And that's, uh, I think George will tell you about how to do this with Happy Lead. So guys, Ask your questions later on. I'll be happy to answer that. Hi guys, do you do you want to do the 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 answers right now, the question and answers, or you want to do it on on the end, Andre? Actually, uh, guys can ask the questions in the chat, and Victor will answer them in the chat. And at the end of the webinar, we can you know okay. allow everybody who wants to jump in and ask questions to go live. So let's let's move forward so you can present. Yes, yeah, I, I haven't seen the chat, guys. So if there's some question I missed, repeat it. I'm going to answer it right, right now in the chat. So make sure. OK, go ahead That's and mute. Great. So let me move forward. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Can you guys see my screen? Yep. Perfect. So, guys, write down on the on the chat if you have still energy to listen about uh, Happy Leads and how we have made uh, some progress in the last uh, one and a half year. So, let's see. One second. So I'm a, I'm the founder of Happy Leads, and I have with me uh, Diamin. Diamin, he is on the call as well. He's uh, head of sales, and we have been through a lot of stuff. And we learned a lot the last year. And uh, although we had experience with uh, sales and marketing before that, we learned a lot using our own tool. And uh, the B2B data. So. We have four things to know about B2B data. We have firmographic data. Firmographic data is when you have data about revenue of the business, you have uh, how many, because different businesses have different business cycles, so sales cycles, so, sorry. Uh, so one business might have one month of, of sales cycle, so you, you can close the, the prospect in one month and in another business, you might have maybe small, smaller business, maybe startup, you maybe do it in, in one week. So this is why we need to, to, to know about the firmographic. We also, uh, it's also important because you can differentiate your sales uh, people because one guy maybe is uh, going only after enterprises and, and the other guy specialize into the small startup. So that's why you need to, to know about the firmographic data. Technographic data 
especially, I will just give you an example uh, in, on the SaaS space, if you are a software as a service, uh, you can see one of your prospects, maybe in their website, they have Google Analytics. Let's say you are mixed panel and you see that they have Google Analytics installed already. So this is a good opportunity for you to go there and say, look, we are mixed panel. We have a better uh, uh, tool from, from what you use So th for this and this and this reason. So that's why it's a, always good to know that techno the, the technographic data of your potential client. A another reason why to know about technographic data is because uh, they might install one of your competitor. So maybe they are already clients of yours and then they install a competitor software into their website. And if you're tracking this data, if you are able to track this data, these changes to their website, uh, then you know that these guys might leave you. So that's, that's technographic data. And one of, of examples of technographic data, it's here. So we can see uh, in Happy Relates, we give you technographic data. And uh, you can see the, the technologies used into their website. This works for, for SaaS, for different businesses, uh, technographic data maybe means something different. So B2B contact data, this is self-explanatory. Why it's important to have a good uh, contact data is not only about how valid they are, they are going to improve your bounce rate and everything uh, like this, and, and they're going to improve your reputation. But it's not only that, it's about finding the key decision makers through a company because you maybe think you contact a company but you talk to a wrong person you never got an answer back and then you tick the company off from your list so you say ah oh, i spoke to ibm that's fine but maybe you didn't spoke to the right person in into the right department into the right country so there is uh, there is a lot to do with uh, finding the key decision maker in the company. So this is going to be uh, something you need to consider. And for the today topic, we're going to talk and concentrate more about the intent data. So what is the intent data? Why is it so confusing? It's so simple. I'm going to explain to you right now how simple it is. Intent data, it's any information we have, any signals, uh, as Victor said before, any signals about the willingness and the readiness of someone to buy your product or service. Okay, so the two keywords here is willingness and readiness. So someone willing to buy the service and how ready they are to buy your service or product. And uh, But there is a problem. How you can track this when you selling through your landing page, right? So you're selling through the landing page, but you cannot identify almost anybody. You identify only people that actually filling up the form. This, these people are typically, like a conversion rate is typically five, maybe 8% if you are doing very well. So what happens with the rest 95%? 95% of your website traffic is not identified. You, you have no idea about who they are. All you get if you use Google Analytics or mixed panel is just uh, 620 visitors right now on your website. Okay, how important is that for you? As a marketer, it is important because you can uh, forecast, you, you, you can see uh, what they visit, what's the funnel look like in general, but you as a salesperson or your sales team cannot do anything with this data because those data are not attached to a specific account. So you just get all of this data uh, are not linked to any company, so you cannot take any decision. So you need to flip the funnel. That's this is the reason why you need to flip the funnel and into the in the B two B space especially. What it works is the account based marketing. This was mentioned before. I'm going to to mention this right now, just in case if you don't know what what it is. So in the traditional marketing, you start finding, you're doing prospecting, you find, let's say, 1,000, 2,000 uh, people, uh, you throw them to your funnel, and then you uh, personalize and you engage with them, and then you score them by the end. So in the B2B, so in the account-based marketing, is the opposite. You first score, you narrow down your results from the very beginning, and, the, and then you start personalize, and then you build relationships with them because in especially in the b2b space building 
relationships with C-level executives is the best thing to do because this is what actually works. People don't buy your service or product just because they see it uh, on, on, uh, on the website. They, especially in the enterprise space, having a good relationships with, uh, with the C executives is a very important thing. So I spoke before about we are not able to identify most of our traffic and therefore any signal we receive is doesn't make sense to us right so in in the inbound traffic when you have inbound traffic to your website you have no idea who they are and even if you receive some signals you don't know where the signals came from from which companies came from so this is what we do in happy leads we identify website visitors p2p website visitors using their ip address and some uh, unique fingerprints. So this is the technology we use. And because we're doing this uh, using the fingerprints, the unique fingerprints as well, we are able to track people when they work from home or even if they use their personal mobile. So I will share two case studies here with you. One is from Benjamin and one is from Marius. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to focus into the review side of this, but into the case study. So uh, they say they capture uh, 30K. This was in the first month only and when they put the review. And what we need to focus here is at the point that he says, I was able to hit them at the, exactly, at the exact right time in the roadmap. And this is a keyword because what people do is you get someone comes in, a lead comes in, and then what you do, you just jump into communicate with them, try to, to, to find out, this is what Andre said before, not every lead is a good lead. So you have a limited resources, and when you spend your resources into co conduct every single person, and especially when, even when you do that at any point, at random times, doesn't make sense. So imagine uh, I want to get a, an, an accountant and I'm trying to find and go to a website of, of an accountant. When I go to the website and just read about uh, the services that they have, it's not the same when I read the pricing that they have. So there are different cycles, sales cycles. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later on. But the important thing here is to hit them on the right time in the roadmap. So when they want to buy, this is the point where you need to, to hit them. And the second one is from Marius when he says, uh, this is a very simple concept. He said, the, the customer browsed a few times but didn't schedule a call. So you have seen this a lot. Like people come to your website, they never schedule a call, they never talk to you, they just browsing. And what he did is he said, simply ask him if he needs any help. So he, he, he saw the company into, one second. He saw the company here. This is the platform where we, we saw the companies when they visit you. He saw the company. He didn't see any action from the uh, potential client, but what he did, he contacted them. And he contacted them because we provide the contact details of the people uh, working in the business. So he found the key decision maker, he contacted them and he closed one deal worth of 12K because he had a high sales ticket that otherwise he would miss. So this is the two case studies. And then I'm going to talk a little bit more about the intent data. So, we have three attributes when it comes to, uh, to intent data. One is the intent type. So what is the intent type? Is to differentiate, for you to differentiate for what is the product or service your prospect is interested in. Because imagine you have, let's say, an accountancy, uh, uh, you are an accountancy office, and then you have people want your service, but these people they want only for accountant in the USA. And maybe you have accountancy services for USA, but maybe you have also for Europe. And when they go to the USA page, 
because we show you this into uh, Hopper leads, when they go to this page, then you know that the indent type is a accountancy for USA startups. So you know that they are interested only in this particular uh, uh, service. So when you contact them, you will not go and say something generic like, oh, I know you know, I know you need uh, accountancy services. You will say, we are the best for accountancy services for startups in USA. So when you say, just an example. So when you say something so personalized to them, it's much easier for you to win the, the sale. The other thing is ident recency. So you need to have the information about when this intent signal came. So if this came one month ago, obviously is much colder than something that came just now. So this is called intent recency. And then we have the intent strength. So how strong is the intent? How ready? This is about what I said before, the readiness of buying. This is all about intent data right now. So how strong is the signal? that come to, to us because someone uh, that comes to the blog page or to how it works page, they are not ready to buy. These guys are on the research phase. This is the first phase here. So this is the research phase when they actually don't know even if they want the service, if they need the service. So you will see traffic coming to your website in, at Happy Leads, we identify this traffic, we tell you which page they visit. So this will, can give you an indication that they are now on the research uh, phase. The second phase, everybody doing this, even us, uh, we go to the provider research. Now, if we know that we're going to, to go with this uh, service, if that we need the service, we need to find the provider, the right provider. So what people do, they go, they open, 10 different providers, they try to find the best one and then buy, right? So the next step, after they find the providers, they find three or four, they start speaking to them. The next thing is comparison. And this is where they are really going to buy. This, this is why the, the signal strength, while we're progressing, it, it comes stronger and stronger. And this is what we show you here. So we show you the activity, the activity score is how strong is the signal. And uh, imagine the last step is if they go to the pricing page or they go to Google Analytics versus Mixed Panel, if you have the Mixed Panel example, uh, they, they try to compare you with, uh, with another service or they go to the pricing page. This is very hot. So you need here to prioritize this uh, event. So that's why, because you don't have unlimited resources you cannot really uh, start speaking to people on the blog. People that visit your blog are not the same important with people visiting your pricing page or your conversion page. Those guys here on the last part are ready to buy with a credit card on the hand. And the research one are people that want to know about, you know, what is, what is about uh, your service? What, is, what, what your service do, how it works. So they need to know, is this good for me? So different signals with different priority for you to, to go after. So let's summarize three steps to success. One is identify each by intent. So you, to do that, you need to have the proper software to identify those signals, and then you are going to have some action. So before you do that, you need to be able to identify them. With Google Analytics currently, you cannot do that. Uh, your sales and marketing team receive the signals, they work together, and they start contact to uh, start contacting the to the buyer. The second step is sort and prioritize accounts. As I said before, depending on the signal strength, you need to prioritize them because they have different readiness status. And if you missed uh, someone that is ready to buy now, and they buy from a competitor, then it's that much difficult for you to to obtain it back. And then the last bit is in then data, do not stop. Uh, on getting new members or new clients is about retain customers. Because as I said before, using the technographics, you can uh, find 
uh, find out if they move to another competitor, if they install in, in, in the example of the SaaS software as a service, if they install a competitor software to their website, or if you can find out if you are in a, in a different um, space, if, the, you, if you find out what they did, uh, if they use another, another tool or service or product at the same time with yours, that means they are going to leave you. So you need to, to listen to these changes and then you need to step in, contact them, try to find what went wrong and try to bring them back to stay with you. So just before, before I close up, I want to say something last. Uh, if you don't have this data, if you don't have this uh, indent data, what people doing wrong uh, from my experience is, let's say you get a client, uh, sorry, uh, you get a, a prospect. The prospect says, I'm not ready to take your service right now. I want to take your service, but later on, because right now we have X, Y, Z uh, obstacles and we cannot move on. But let's let's catch up. This is very usual. Everybody says this. Let's ca catch up in one or two months. So what you do typically, you put one in two months from now. You put a task to your CRM or to or you put a, an alert somewhere in your calendar, and you contact them then. But the problem is, they say that just to give you. you they want from you to give them some space. They don't want you to come up the next day and, and start again the conversation. So they want to, to, to put a distance. They want still to make maybe maybe business with you, but they don't want you to put them to put you in the in, you know in the next week or two weeks from now. But what happens if they actually want to buy before the two months? So they're going to what they're going to do, they're going to go to your website, they're going to go to their competitor, your competitor's website, open them up, try to compare you're going to miss the, the, the signal, the buyer, higher buy, buyer in dense uh, signal, and they're going to buy from somewhere else, probably. So, or the, or the opposite, like they might buy before or after. So you maybe hit them with an email before they buy, or you maybe hit them an, 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 with an email after they buy. So even if you hit them too many times before, they actually be ready, they will be upset because you, you then contact them two or three times and then they will say, okay, please don't contact me anymore. I don't want to, I don't want to hear from you anymore. You contact me three times now. So that's why having the intent, the signal, the alert coming to you when they are ready to buy, it's much more, uh, it's much better. So that's it from me. Uh, thank you so much. If you have any questions, we can address them. In a uh, bit. Meanwhile, uh, while guys will be asking questions, I want to share with you one practical uh, process map that I feel might be useful for everybody here. Uh, again, just uh, referring to my part, how to filter and transfer the intent data and how to create a process. So let's say if uh, you have created the process and um, basically you have developed SOP. Now how sales can use this data? I will share with you one practical example. Uh, just let me share my screen again. Uh, can you see my screen now, guys? Yeah? Okay, cool. Uh, so that's a practical example. Let's say we have four core pages, home page about us, customer stories. I'm just, you know, describing the typical website structure. Next, we have, this is like, uh, this is outreach for a, a software company, of course, for a SaaS product. Then we have features page. And we have, we might have different pages for each of the features we have. Then we might have some, something like partners page and schedule demo page. So what is our next step? Again, you see the, like, this is the past prods because we used to work with Albacross. Uh, again, uh, the first step here is the research, something that I was uh, talking about in my presentation, that you need to do the qualification, you need to store the data, when account, when account hits specific 
engagement criteria, you transfer the data to CRM. And basically what you need to do is this as an example, you need to, I recommend to make a screenshot of accounts activity. And if you don't have, let's say, if your uh, intent data uh, software doesn't integrate with your CRM, then just make a screenshot of accounts activity and store it in a CRM. So sales rep, SDR, account executive can easily access this data. And I suggest to create a task for SDR, something like reach out to these accounts, connect with them on LinkedIn. Then that's a typical workflow. Again, don't, uh, don't, think, don't think about this like a silver bullet. It's just an example of the process. So your next step is find and target job roles on LinkedIn and engage with recent content by liking and commenting. Next, you go and just wait one day, send a connection request. Here is like, uh, I'm just have a link to the examples. Uh, if they accept, you know, if your target connections accept it, then you can just record a personalized video and uh, send it via personal mail message. Uh, next, wait seven days, engage with the recent content on LinkedIn again, do the same activity. If they don't reply, find this contact on another platform, for, like, for example, on Twitter. And again, what you can do is follow plus like plus comment on one of the recent tweets. Wait one day, send a personalized uh, message on Twitter. You can use the same video that you have sent on LinkedIn. And if they don't reply, then you can add this account to email sequence. It shouldn't be long uh, in this specific case because it's all about connecting. It's not about this multi-channel outbound cadence that require 14 emails or whatever, you know, the, <laughs> the truth about sales cadence is that by default salespeople used to say that it's, uh, you need to have at least 14, you know, touches with a prospect. So uh, before they, before you'll get reply, uh, this is an example of how you can make it, you know, multi-channel. So start with LinkedIn, then move to Twitter, for example. It can be Facebook, it can be Reddit. I don't, so it's just an example of platform, you know, or it can be old fashioned forum. And even in some spaces we do, you know, we find people we are old fashioned forums. And uh, only then you add these accounts, you know, to, to some email uh, sequence. And that's, that's the best example how to build the relationship because let's be honest, not everybody is active on LinkedIn. Not everybody is active on Twitter. Not everybody is active on Facebook. So we don't need to make, you know, social media uh, as a silver bullet. So oh, multi-channel approach always works, but you need to develop it. You need to create it and hope this example uh, also helps. Also, you know, might be valuable add-on to what we have shared today. Um, and that's it. Uh, let me know if you have any questions. Uh, let's check. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Uh, uh, feel free, guys, to ask any questions. Uh, is there any way to see trends on keywords? Uh, yes, 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 yes. I forgot this software. Just uh, uh, this software, uh, I will give you an idea. This software was created by uh, Brian Dean, who is founder uh, at backlinko.com. You can actually visit, I feel that you can visit his website, uh, backlinko.com, and uh, he created a software that exactly provides trends on keywords. And he also, uh, uh, um, let, let me be honest, I forgot the name, uh, but you definitely just search, you know, keyword trends, Brian Dean, something like this, and you'll identify his software. He created this solution. And he also, this software helps to identify the hot topics. So that's uh, something, just search for Brian Dean, you know, keyword, uh, like hot trends or keyword trends, something like this, and you'll find this software. Uh, uh, what else? Any other question, guys? Uh, feel free to jump in if you want. Any questions about, yeah, about leveraging intent data? Uh, ah, okay. <laughs> it was about rocks and gold. <laughs> yeah, I'll answer that, uh, Maxim. Yes, uh, definitely. You can. The, the, the thing about rocks and gold is that, you know, you can build many different filters anything right and you can use the timelines and look at the basically look look at what happened last year what happened through the year 
I export this data, visualize the data if needed. There is some basic visualization capabilities on the platform. So yes, obviously it's used to look at the trends. And I would say overall we have um, gathered like 3 million plus jobs, you know, for IT sector, for instance. So it's, we did some research on uh, remote jobs and how companies switched to remote during COVID. That was interesting to compare to what angel.co posted because like in, in short, there was a huge spike of remote jobs in April, but before that in February, there was you know less jobs uh, overall on the market. I'm talking about the previous year when the lockdown just started. So yes, we, we, we look at the trends ourselves and our users look at the trends for their businesses, uh, you know, digital transformation, transformation in logistics, there are many great examples on that. So just um, hit me up <laughs> through support and I can show you more and run some searches for you. Uh, just to wrap it up, so, uh, ah, yeah, that, there is one. Question for Happy Leads, yes. Yeah. Uh, let me just read this one. Uh, uh, yeah, so we have a partnership with uh, Texao. So this is what uh, one, one part of Adri, what he said about this workflow, sending automatic uh, to It's uh, sending automatic LinkedIn uh, or Facebook uh, connections. So this is what they do. They provide this automation and then we have the identification part. We have done a partnership with them. So we identify the companies and then we send them to Texao and then there's an automation to do all of this stuff uh, with automation. So yes, we, we actively partnership with them. And if you want to know more about it and how we can set up the strategy and uh, how we can set up all of this process and flow, uh, we can discuss this in a demo later on, if you're interested more. Uh, another question is coming from Maxim, how to involve content strategy to your process. Uh, it all starts um, with, uh, let's say, with flipping the mindset from outbound to inbound. When you realize that, first of all, you need to create awareness, you need to generate awareness, then you, instead of doing let's say 100% outreach cadences that's, that have only one goal, pitch a product or service to anybody that potentially fits your ideal customer profile, then you start doing demand generation. And demand generation exactly all about sharing the content, all about creating the content that is relevant to your target accounts. I will quickly, uh, two weeks ago, I had a webinar on this topic with, sell, uh, with Scott Clary uh and who is head of sales on uh at one of the fastest growing startups in san francisco so that uh, i will share the link in the moment so you can check that webinar but basically key ideas here first of all you need to start with map of informational needs what are the most important topics your target audience might be interested in and second point here is who will be in your demand generation team. It's critical to have somebody from sales. It's critical to build a reputation for sales to make a sales, let's say, a trusted advisor for a list of your target accounts, not just being perceived as another sales rep, let's say. So now, you, in most cases, you are dealing with the buying committee. So you need to create a standalone strategy, I mean, content strategy to each of the buying committee members. This is what I used to call peers content strategy. It makes sense if, let's say, chief uh, CEO, let's say, is uh, sharing content on topics that are related to other executives. Let's say in our space, I can talk about go-to-market strategy, account-based marketing, etc. Then we have another members of our buying committee and your, let's say, head of sales should be talking to other head of sales. And now you have, let's say, your CTO also involved in your process and he might be talking about technical stuff that is relevant to, let's say, CTO and let's say product department of your target accounts. Why we are doing this? Because the idea is to penetrate into target accounts. You know, if you are prospecting mid-size or enterprise companies, the in-house discussion is imminent. It's inevitable. So the more people inside your target accounts are aware about you, about your company, the high chances are that 
your deal will be reviewed, your offer will be reviewed, and you'll get a positive reply, you'll get a meeting, or you'll get an opportunity to close that deal successfully. So these are, first of all, the key points. You start with this, let's say, with the diversification, you create diversified content strategy, you have this engagement, you create demand generation team, and, ne and next you have the processes, you know, to warm up these accounts, how to connect, how to activate them, how to engage them. And in a moment, I will share the links to these webinars where we explain these processes in detail. So as well, I will send you guys the recording. Uh, probably uh, tomorrow morning, I will send you the recording and I will include the links to this webinar so you won't miss it. Uh, hope it makes Andrew, sense. Andrew, may, maybe I can just add one thing to what you said. I completely agree with you. I would say uh, that was partially mentioned in my presentation is uh, what you say is important but it's also important when you say things, right? So it will be great if you would include to the content strategy is also the context of the situation because you know you can. It's not the time, right? <laughs> Don't send the messages in the middle of the night, of course. But the idea is that you know when was the last time you were in contact? Were you in contact before? Do they searching for something? Have they visited you know your website or have they searched for something? Like pay attention to context because context will make people. Uh, see that your message is very different from everything that they receive, right? That's how you flip the, let's say, this 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 story of them seeing you approaching them, but also, um, you know, kind of they see that you did your research on them and that you know what they're what they're talking about, you know, the context, so they can give you more details. They like they say, oh, I this guy already knows what's my problem is, right? I'm gonna help him out. And you know that's how the meaningful conversation would be started. So, like in this case, context makes whatever your content strategy uh, super valuable and super uh, effective. That was another question, actually, to to you, Andrew. I guess. Uh, so, regarding outreach or content strategy, so uh, I answered that it makes sense to start with content, but. Uh, you need to connect with target accounts. You need to grow your audience. But I want to, let's say, diversify outreach and connection. This, uh, because lots of people understand that outreach is just a pitch. So outreach equals pitch. And this is actually not the point. Again, uh, you need to grow your audience. If you want to create this awareness, obviously you need to have this audience. So you need to connect with these people. And uh, finally to attract this attention and to create this engagement yeah, and to, to, cr to create this demand, you need to, to create the content. So this is what I was talking about. Just uh, in a second, I will post the links to these webinars, I mean, to the webinar recordings. And yeah, you can just uh, watch them at a spare time and see how, how, how we are doing this. Uh, any other questions, guys? Anything else? Um, well, I'm just checking. Yeah, so I'm dropping the links to the webinars I was referring to. Uh, check them out. Uh, and yeah, so you won't miss the links. Uh, I will I will send you the recording. I will send, just uh, wait for the email coming from Andrei Zinkevich and I will include the links to this past webinars so you can rewatch them at your free time. Uh, cool. Uh, thanks a lot, everybody who showed up. Thanks a lot for the great questions. I really like the conversation today. And uh, yeah, hope it was valuable. Just uh, please share with us quick feedback. Did you get some insights? Was it valuable for you? Um, always great to hear from you guys. Thanks a lot, Joshua. Yeah, if yeah, thanks a lot. Rina. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Yeah, thanks Lovely. a lot. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Trina. Thanks a lot, Max. Thanks a lot, Angelos, James. I uh, would love to get a copy of the <laughs> so uh, Unfortunately, I can't share it because it <laughs> contains lots of like our private information. So that's something that I can't share, unfortunately. So 
anyhow, if you'll have any questions, if you'll be working on your SOP, feel free to reach me out on LinkedIn and just ask questions. I will happily provide you the feedback on your SOP. Cool. Um, again, thanks a lot for showing up. I wish you an amazing rest of the day. And uh, yeah, let's connect on LinkedIn, guys. Cheers. True, true. Bye.